Welcome to the Stanford Lee Show. This episode, Pops Likes Jazz, with special guest, Micah Weems. Finally happened. Yes, yes. Glad to be here. Thanks yeah. for having me. I think we just kind of hit it right off because uh, we're both professionals in our own way. I guess myself, probably more studio songwriting. Um, I don't know, but you've been on the road a lot. Like you, you go out and play, and you know, mm -hmm. do a lot of stuff. I think you use the term uh, quarterbacking. Yes. So you do more than just play it's like you you know the business and uh i think about people and mm -hmm. how to get things done and i kind of wanted to tap your brain about that because that's really interesting for me i'm more of a you know kind of reclusive uh mm -hmm. studio rat kind of guy myself yeah. and uh, uh i just wanted to know, to know more about uh, your experiences and uh i guess kick it off uh, you know with uh, thinking about uh transportation I think transportation is one of the ways things uh, can always fail, Definitely. you know, from what I've seen. It's just like, it's always something. And I think that we don't, uh, and this is before the crisis now, I'm saying like, uh, it's one of the last things you invest in. Like you get your instruments, you get your guitars, drums, that really nice amplifier. But uh, then there's the hitch and then there's the trailer that goes on the hitch and uh all you know all that stuff that kind of goes down the road and connects together right have you have you ever had any incidents with that oh yes uh definitely um incidents can arise all the time where there's a trailer hitch uh malfunction or maybe it's bambi running across the road at two o'clock in the morning we've had that happen before um but thankfully nothing major and uh so definitely thankful about that um but there's all type of things. For the most part, um, things go off without a hitch, so to speak. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> pun intended. <laughs> pun intended, totally. <laughs> but um, for the most part, it's, uh, it's usually pretty good. Nothing happens out of ordinary too much. Uh, one time we did run out of gas, uh, which was, you know, pretty interesting. Um, luckily, we were near the exit and we were able to just walk a short distance and get some more gas so no one wanted to sit up front with the driver so that's how that happened now i've i've played some clubs in my day and um i haven't really made the trip uh, across the eastern seaboard and you know cat skills and all that kind of stuff but i mean you know like i've just played local mm -hmm. and i uh, i can't imagine the responsibility if you have like uh you know where you're paying like eight people to go and play somewhere you know like a full band with what you know like everybody in it uh um, how does that work? Because I think it must be stressful, you know, people showing up and uh, people not showing up. Um, I've been a part of uh, different situations and sometimes it is difficult getting a lot of people on the same page. Uh, it's nice if you can keep the numbers low, but sometimes people may request more in a band. Um, but I've also worked um, in 
marketing and direct sales, which is another aspect of getting multiple people moving in the same direction at the same time. Um, I think just having a burning desire to succeed and uh, having a passion for music also, it helps a lot. So it's one of those things where you see someone doing something, you say, wow, how do they just keep at it? Uh, for, me, for me, music, that's what keeps me going. And uh, I just enjoy the process of it. Uh, I like networking. Uh, I like uh, talking with different people, things of that nature. So it kind of comes naturally. I've just changed uh, the business, uh, the product per se, uh, that I was ultimately marketing. Um, took all the skills from marketing, added music, and you know, that's kind of how it is. That, how it that's a skill set. <laughs> that really is a skill set. One I wish that I had, uh, you know, to kind of uh, bolster what I'm doing with uh, business. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I've been trying to improve my social media. That's, you know, like one of Me the too. reasons we're, Me you know, too. we're here time. and, you know. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm social media lazy, to be honest with you. And uh, I've been working uh, over the last year uh, trying to uh, just be more active and, you know, Actually, it's been more of a learning curve for me, uh, kind of being away from it for about a good 10 years or so. And so I decided to uh, finally go ahead and not be so much of a dinosaur to <laughs> step into uh, the online, you know, um, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting your presence out yeah, there. Yeah, presence. Thank yeah. You. I mean, it's uh, and, and some of it, you wonder if it's a waste of time, like uh, and I've been enjoying some of it now. Like when I first started doing uh, TikTok, it was just kind of like, what am I doing? You know, like right. I, I feel like I'm trying to be a 13 year old girl or something or, you know, right. like I just feel ridiculous. But, uh, yeah. you know, it really, uh, you know, sometimes the numbers really build up and Instagram mm -hmm. uh, uh, plus uh, YouTube. I don't, I don't know. It's like it's uh, man, it's always a, a battle. I mean, I wish we were like. Uh, you know, big time like PewDiePie or something, or, right, right. you know, had the numbers, but, <laughs> you know, it keeps growing, you know, that's the thing, you know, it's like, uh, you know, because I would uh, go to my wife and be like, uh, yeah, why are we doing this? We've got like, uh, eh, so many people, and, and she's like, you know, telling me we've got double that, mm -hmm. or I come back and it's like, oh, we got so many people, it's like, no, we've got, you know, 100 more people, or thousand more people or whatever i don't know the scale of that mm -hmm. but it's just like it uh you know each month it gets better and that's something this you know i'm still learning mm. trying to you know necessarily get to that point um you know i just have to quit being afraid of the process of that per se and uh, i try to focus on you know what i can control yeah and um for a working uh, musician uh, like, uh, tell me, you know, so you're taking this uh, skill set of being a musician, marketing, quarterbacking bands, you know, kind of, I guess, musicians, it's like herding cats, as we say, it's, mm -hmm. um, uh, you're taking this uh, skill set. So what does your schedule look like? I mean, it, uh, if you're doing all this, are you like, uh, like, what is a weekend like for you? Uh, now, a weekend is, is kind of slowed down a little bit. Uh, but usually I work during the day. I may work overnight. Uh, it just depends on what hits the schedule. Maybe a gig Friday night, uh, possibly traveling during the day on Saturday. Um, so again, I, I enjoy it. So the constant, you know, running is not really a big issue for me, but it's, it can get tiring sometimes. But uh, hitting the stage, um, that's just something I enjoy doing. So. Um, I'm willing to stay up <laughs> in order to get it done sometimes. Uh, you know, it's it, it's it's like a lot of other things. You know, it comes with, you know, it's little glitches and things like that. Uh, sometimes you may, it's bad weather, you know, um, might be difficult loading, something of that nature. Um, but it's all a part of the process and I, I enjoy it. But, um, you know, I think the more you spend time with people, you kind of get to know them. So it makes it a little easier when it comes to dealing with people when you spend a lot of time with them on the road. And for the most part, it's uh, it's usually a good thing. I think so. And it, it's, it's good when you have people that you can bring along with you. You know, they're mm -hmm. like the person you can call up for a gig or, mm -hmm. you know, always go back to. I mean, I have a few people like that. 
and um, you know I'm thinking um, I'm thinking about uh, so we're in the Atlanta area mm -hmm. just like uh, I think one of the ways musicians cut their teeth is uh, playing in the churches how do you like that it's I, oh, there's so absolutely. many good players yeah that's, uh, that's engineers too definitely that's where I started um, I enjoy playing at church uh, best thing about playing in church is you don't have to bring any gear usually so for a drummer that's always amazing you could just walk right in sit down do your thing um, so it, it's it's always a good time it's always a good mix of musicians you uh, get to play with from time to time um, I love everything about it I used to uh, spend a night at my grandmother's friend house who lived down the street from our church just so I could get there early enough in order to play uh, before I was qualified to play and that's kind of how I cut my teeth I would uh I would work at the church, you know, vacuum cut grass just so I can sneak back inside and play the drum. So sometimes you just be sitting there playing, <laughs> you sleep, you know, you just running off fumes. Um, it, it's, and you love what you do, you know. It's one of those things you just kind of keep going. People wonder how do you keep going, but it's when you love what you do. Uh, it makes it easier. You probably don't even realize you're running and the way you are sometimes, but. Uh, it was something I've always wanted to do, and uh, I've been fortunate to be able to do it. Yeah, it's something that you can share with people and uh, you know, kind of pass on in your mm -hmm. family. Uh, tell me about um, your early experiences with music. Uh, anything that uh, your parents like that you like as well? No. <laughs> um, and that's interesting. Growing up in church, we didn't listen to much outside of gospel music, so um that's where my quest started um i was listening to the radio i was listening to jazz um listening to anything other than church music not that i didn't want to hear church music but it was when you told not to listen to it you're like well what am i not supposed to be listening to so um it was on from there and then questions just started and i'm like well why do they sound like this and why does it you know begin like that and you know um, how did they come together? That that was always a question I had. How did that come together? How did that happen? And um, I always thought to myself, if they're on the radio, they're definitely professional. And I just want to see, not that I've ever wanted to do that, but I just, you know, want to see how the professional side of things work musically outside of what I grew up seeing, um, you know, in the church and things like that. So, um, yeah, I was just, whatever it was I can listen to, um, I was on it and growing up, uh, everything was on the radio, everything. So oh, that yeah. was always a good time. Just listening to, you know, local radio, you, you'll hear everything. Where were you at in the radio era? What state? I was in um, Ohio, uh, where oh. I grew up, Cincinnati, Ohio. So everything, um, Stevie Wonder. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, Boy George, Earth, Wind and Fire, Michael Jackson, um, man, the list just goes on on Steely Dan. Um, That's right. Just everything. It was now there are separate radio stations for different genres of music, but everything used to just be on one radio station at one point, and that was that was good. At night, it was probably some gospel, but. <laughs> Yeah, you had yeah. A, a, a great mix of music. Um, music was, uh, and I grew up in Ohio where you know funk bands, you know, come from. So Lakeside, um, just literally, yeah, you know, Ohio, Ohio players, players yeah. you know, um, Bootsy, mm -hmm. um, just everybody, you know what I mean, Zapp and Roger. Uh, so that was another one of my favorite uh, bands coming up. Uh, oh man. Yeah, that was always favorite. on the Rogers. For me. Oh, yeah, always on the radio. Zap and Rogers, Psh, man. <laughs> or bounce to the outs. That's uh. Eddie. Yeah. So yeah, um, growing up in my household, uh, family, I had it wasn't a lot of influences from my family musically, so I had to go out and kind of just find them myself, and you know, I didn't have very many musical influences through my family. What about your father? Uh, what type of musical influences did he uh, leave with you? It was uh, it was all jazz, and um, uh, you're you're talking about a gospel background. Well, my family uh, went through this uh, 
phase where they were very religious. So my dad tried to tuck away the jazz records and, mm. uh, you know, there's stories about that. But, uh, yeah, he had the whole collection and he was like uh, into mid-century stuff. Mm. So like, uh, you know, classic stuff like Miles Davis and uh, uh, Dave Brubeck and Chet Baker, all these great players, mm. you know, you know, back in the era. And uh, it was funny because he would have like... Uh, I mean, that was what I kind of grew up with, even though he was trying to hide it from me. It's like, I'm going to be a bad influence or something. You know, he's going to be going to nightclubs and drinking beverages and <laughs> carrying on or whatever. But uh, as, as we're talking about this, it's like there was, um, uh, with my father, there was this thing of good taste. I think it was nostalgia because it was a great era. But also uh, growing up kind of rough and Appalachian, I think it was like this uh, window into a world that was more cosmopolitan and sophisticated. Mm -hmm. He just like, uh, he loved jazz and he didn't like anything that was kind of lowbrow or redneck or pedestrian. It was just like uh, all classical and jazz music. Right, right. Yeah, so he, he was kind of, he had standards, I guess, as you say. And uh, um, But he, he was kind of uh, a comedian about, uh, you know his opinions about some of the players like uh he would uh you know would mention like uh you know girl from empanema mm -hmm. i can't wait to play that and Absolutely. uh and stan getz is like uh this uh, player he's like oh stan getz he's like this player that sounds like everybody else or uh he'd talk about his influence uh, on saxophone lester young uh, it always sounds like Lester Young has like, uh, you know, spit in his horn or something. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, another favorite was uh, Jerry Mulligan. He was the guy that uh, played the big uh, Barry saxophone, mm -hmm. you know, really famous. And uh, uh, it's like, uh, who's that guy rotor rooting back there? Like it just sounds, you know, like yeah. a bunch of pipes and, you know, stuff going on. So he had kind of a uh, animated uh, way of uh, looking at everything. And he was visual, he was a photographer too, okay. you know, he's into photography and uh, really mastered that craft. And I think it's good to, uh, you know, kind of, I don't know, it's just, a, it was a great time and great memories I had of my father and uh, a, a lot of it connects through music, mm -hmm. you know, even though I was kind of a, a lowbrow rocker, it's like I was always into his music as well as my music. Was he a musician also? Um, no, he didn't really uh, uh, get into playing music, okay. uh, more of a listener. But uh, through the years, he could name every album and everybody that was on the album. And, uh, you know, he'd uh, read off, like just from memory, like a whole, you know, verses of Edgar Allan Poe and everything, just sharp as a tack. That was why I wanted to dedicate this uh, episode to Pops, Absolutely. you know? Yeah. I never really grew up, but, uh, you know, at least I kind of went down the path of, you know, music and, mm -hmm. you know, some of his influences, uh, you know, were meaningful to me along the way trying to discover music. Absolutely. We wanted to talk about the craft, man, because mm -hmm. you're like, uh, and, and I'm trying to learn from drummers. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, so, uh, so necessary because they say that uh, uh, like a band can't be any better than its drummer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's that's what some of the rock bands right. are like. You know, you can't be any better than your drummer, which puts a lot of pressure on me having a studio. Like I had to learn how to play drums, mm -hmm. you know, in a way that, you know, sounds like drums, at least decent until somebody like you can, you know, come and play or, you know, one of my friends or whatever. But it's part of the part of the job really you know not just Absolutely. running the boards it's like uh you know you got to be able to you know dial things in and you know get a good uh, drum sound you know like a snare that's like boom, you know and mm -hmm. uh, a kick that's like boom, 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 you know and all that stuff like you were tuning up my drum kit i'm like please <laughs> like uh this has never been tuned up it's a it uh, sounds great by the way yeah <laughs> Sounds really great. I mean, that's an amazing set of skills to play multiple instruments and still dive into the drums. So it's amazing, yeah. man. You know, I I'm appreciate just it. one instrument, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it all. And yeah, I love being with great musicians, great Absolutely. people. Absolutely. Uh, networking, uh, building relationships, cultivating relationships uh, with musicians is, you know, kind of core. Uh, to building the band uh, of any magnitude, um, just 
being able to network and you know get on the same page with people yeah definitely you really uh you really make me want to get back out there you know and uh do some stuff and absolutely you know see some of the road you know watch it go by out the window right and... <laughs> right right it's living man dude it's uh yeah it's a nice time nice mm -hmm. time absolutely so let's let's get back out on the road let's do something man let's do it man <laughs> yeah, absolutely. yeah let's kick it <laughs> Micah, you're a consummate musician and professional. It's been a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you. You as well, sir. And we'll, we'll see, see you next time on, on the Stanford Lee Show. show.